fall of 2019, I was asked to participate on the production side of Alone Season 7, The Arctic. My journey would take me north to Yellowknife Northwest Territories, where I would board a Buffalo airplane and fly to a remote outpost at Plumber's Lodge. There's no road access to the lodge and it can only be reached via a long boat ride from Yellowknife or a plane. Once at the outpost, my job was to help contestants who had tapped out to share my stories and relate to their experience. Naturally, I hope for the chance to do a little bit of lake trout fishing should we have some downtime. Here I am in my cabin on Great Slave Lake and I'm here for Alone Season 7 and I've been working on the other side of the camera and uh, spending some time while my job is to hang out basically with the people that tap out because um, I can relate to them. I've been there, I've done the show and, and been a contestant and a survivalist on the show too and I cannot confirm or deny whether anyone has tapped out yet. Helping on the production side of things and have definitely had some time to check out the area a little bit and uh, catch some massive lake trout. So, uh, I mean, you should see some of these fish that I'm just catching from shore around here. It's absolutely epic. If you ever get a chance to uh, head out to Great Slave to do a fishing trip, I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, so things have been pretty amazing. We have a beautiful day today. We did run into some nasty weather, but a gorgeous day. Really awesome experience to be part of uh, the Alone production and uh, meet some more great people and also kind of reunite with some people that uh, I'd met when Ted and I are on the show. So amazing time here on Great Slave. Got one. Oh, got away. Big one. Uh, oh yeah, feels pretty good. Just don't want to lose it. Keep that tension on. This one's got yellow fins. Thinking it's probably about. 10 pounds, maybe more. I think I'm gonna land this one. Yep. Yeah, baby. Woo! Hell yeah. 12 pounds, I'd say. There you go. Look at that. 
What a beast. Wow. What a fish. Yeah! Oh, here we go. Here we go. Scaring all the bait fish. It's swimming towards me. Not as big as the last one. Little guy, in comparison. Oh, don't tie yourself up there, bud. Land him on the rocks. Avoid the uh, gills. Still a good size though. Oh man, it's fighting good though. Whoa! That orange fins. Oh, I lost it, man. Hey Megan, uh, Peter Lane um, oh, yeah. said that if we tell oh, him where the barrels are, he'll beast. have someone pick them up and we'll get a rebate. Holy sh! Awesome. Uh, I, do you want me to send, him, oh. send him an email about that? Or are you already Oh my goodness. Him? I'm chatting with them. Are the barrels at Buffalo? Yeah, they would be going to the Buffalo Cargo Warehouse. <sighs> Perfect, thanks. Thank you. you. Guys running out my spool. Got a big one on right now. Be tough to bring this guy in. There's a shoal here. That is a big old fish. Oh! Gotta keep that tension on the rod. Oh man, my hand's getting sore. My hand is getting sore. Oh my goodness. I gotta tire him out. Oh, I lost it. Oh, sh. Oh no. Oh, personal best lake trout just lost. Damn it. Oh man, that was crushing. I just had an absolute beast on. Oh, I just lost it. I don't know what the hell happened. My drag is maybe a little too loose, but damn. I gotta give that another shot, man. That was epic, that fight. Holy shit. If I catch one, I can't land it here. So I'm gonna have to walk around to the other side. One thing that's amazing to me is how much current there is moving past here. I've never really seen current like this in a lake before. Oh, there we go. Well, it feels like a good one. Pretty good anyways. I 
don't know if I can land this one from here though. I just got this guy tangled up. I don't even have him hooked anymore. Barely hooked. Barely hooked. Come on. Come on. Up on the rocks with ya. There we go. Wow, what a beauty. Beauty fish. Hit them through the nose of all places. Uh, can't say uh, I've ever done that before. There. Look at that one. Uh, gorgeous colors. Oh, pep and that guy. Well, there we go. Started out a little slow, then it was just like I was hammering these monsters, and I, I kept losing them. I had one on that was probably double of the size I just caught, and then I fished and fished and fished, and I was just not getting any action, and all of a sudden, wham! Just a beauty. I don't know if it's my personal best, but it's one of the biggest lake trout I've ever caught. Uh, my guess is that one's probably probably at probably about 12 pounds an honest 12 pounds a lot of people might say it's like 15 but um just a beauty beauty fish and uh, the amount of meat on that is awesome so i can tell uh how exciting it must be to catch a fish that size um when you're surviving on a loan just any fish we were even catching fish this big me, me and my brother and keeping them when we were on vancouver island and it was just super, super exciting uh, just to get anything of a decent size. So catching a fish that big, I mean, if you're rashing, that's like five days of food. So super awesome. Uh, yeah, catching fish here. Great Slave Lake, freaking loving it. That's, that's making the cut. Oh, hey. Paul Vance whistling. The ladies will be all over this video. <laughs> Okay, so not a nice day today, not particularly cold, but um, definitely very wet and snowy, so really wet snow, and I'm thinking about the people that are out there surviving on a loan here, and it, it couldn't have been a nice day for them because uh, to get wet out there is, is not something you want, and uh, very hard to kind of go around and check your traps or sit on the lakeshore fishing in that wet weather and just get soaked. So it might have been a day that people that don't have a lot of food in hand uh, might have gone hungry or, or might sort of um, gotten a little bit behind 
if they weren't able to travel around today. Uh, when Ted and I were on a loan, we said that uh, having food in hand was like having money in the bank. That food would allow you to do other things because you wouldn't just have to focus all your time on searching for food. You could um, do other things that would uh, elevate your status out there. And uh, um, so when you don't have food is when things get challenging. So yeah, it must it couldn't have been a very nice day for people surviving out there, but again, not freezing cold. Uh, and today, basically, I'm just on call. I'm, I'm waiting to assist with uh, the people who tap out. And uh, no one's tapped out today. So, you know, things are going to go from uh, 0 to 150 around here as soon as someone taps out. And, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, they monitor the contestants with a satellite uh, texting device. Uh, and the, let me tell you, man, anybody who thinks the show isn't legit, I've seen the behind-the-scenes look now and, like, everybody is a long way away like the the uh, like probably like a solid 45 minute full rip uh speedboat ride uh to get out to you know where the contestants are so yeah nobody's particularly close when the rain stopped i, I ran outside and took a few casts caught two beauty lakers lost another two which was a bummer and uh, now i'm gonna go inside and grab a bite to eat and it's funny thinking about the people out there. I remember, man, after like day 60, me and Ted just wanted to get the hell out of there and we ended up staying for 75. But now that some times pass, I, I just, I'm envious and almost in a way of the people out there. I really want to test myself, have the chance to test myself in this kind of environment. Uh, so, you know, I, I know it's going to be tough for them, but um, at the same time, man, I, 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 there's times when I wish I was in their place too. So uh, I hope they're all doing well and I, I wish them all the best of luck. Okay, so got something pretty big on here. Feels like a good size anyways. Oh, there it is. Yeah, probably good 10 pounds. Just doesn't want to get caught today. Yeah. There it is. It's big.
Yeah. <laughs> Just pulling straight down. I'm not getting anything. Like no. <laughs> yeah, I think this maybe it's going to be like 15, 20 pounds, no? Quite possibly. Maybe more. easy to get overexcited I find though. I am not gaining anything <laughs> on to it. Starting to think you're snagged again. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh yeah. Not as big as I thought, you see? 15, 20 pounds. Good fighter though. Yeah, for sure. That's a nice fish, man. That's a beauty. If I caught that fish, you know, back home, I'd be real happy. What would you call that one, Bobby? 10? 10? I mean, we can call them 15 if you rather, but... Call them <laughs>
Oh yeah, just crushed it. Now it's closer to evening. This one, look, see how it moves around on the rocks and snaps you off, you see that? So when you're beaching them on the rocks, you gotta be careful because the fish moves around and it wears your line down and breaks your line. So you always gotta check your line. Couple uh, keepers here. And that is going to be me and Tori's dinner. And these are small ones, right? I purposely kept small ones because uh, keeping small ones makes the gene pool healthier, but they also taste better. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just showing this is how I got a trout slip from the asshole right to the top here. And then, then I stab through here like that and cut up the top and create a second mouth there. That's what I pulled down on and that's going to pull all the guts and the gills out at once. Cleaning them this way is fast. You waste no meat and uh, you can still go back and fillet them later if you want. So, pretty good method, I think. There's all the guts, gills, there's actually some roe in this one, and I'm just left with all the edible parts of the fish. It's awesome. Awesome little technique. I even have the, uh, the bottom of the mouth off, so you know, you just cook with the head on. I can still do that, but I don't know if I'm going to yet. I'm probably just gonna bake it whole like that in the oven. There we go. It's one clean fish. I'm gonna keep the head because the cheeks are good. I'm just gonna kill it and then. Uh, Gonna gut it. Right, like that. I just killed it by hitting it with the spine of my knife. I'm gonna go through the uh, under chin, out the top like that. I'm gonna grab this little thing. I'm gonna pull down and everything with it with a fish this big. A little more challenging, but not too bad. Front fins, gills, guts, everything out in one shot. And then I, uh, there's a bloodline on the bottom of the spine. When you look into the fish, That you scrape out with your thumb. There we go. There's two beauty lake trout. 
I caught today and kept. Hands are just freezing. It's winter. Don't you eat those fish. Well, I don't know if you can hear me, but our plane just landed. Gonna jump in the Twin Otter, head back to Yellowknife. Awesome time in the north once again. I learned that things go from zero to a hundred when you're working on the production side of a loan. Since the contestants are responsible for documenting much of their own journey, there's little that the production side does in between tap outs or times when they need to facilitate an emergency evacuation. In between, there's lots of time for lake trout fishing and other things, but we always had to be on our toes, particularly the people who would go and extract the condescents who had tapped out. It was an amazing experience to go north and see a little bit more from the other side of the camera, lake trout fish, and spend some time with the contestants to get a little piece of their journey. And also it was nice to do it when I was well fed, unlike when I was on the show. <laughs>